Welcome to this predicted paper from OnMaths. This paper represents the best guess for the upcoming exams. Please use this paper in addition to your other revision. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMaths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing. This coordinate is telling us to go 2 to the left from the centre. We go right when it's positive, we go left when it's negative, so it's 2 to the right. And then it's telling us to go 1 up. It's up because it's positive. So we need to go 1 up and we get to the coordinate of B. So the coordinate we get to is B. And so we just look at the minus 2 on the x-axis and the 1 on the y-axis and that is where point B is. If you imagine these numbers written out as a list, there would be 5 lots of 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4... Five. There'd be nine lots of one, so one, one, etc., etc. Okay. So when we're looking to see the total number of goals scored in the season, we could write them out as a list and then add them up. But a quicker way of doing that is just multiplying the amount of goals by the frequency. So we've got five lots of zero goals, which will just be zero. Nine lots of one goal, so that's just nine. Four lots of two goals, so that's eight. 6 lots of 3 goals, that's 18, and then 6 lots of 4 goals, that's 24. So all we need to do now is add up the uh, 0, 9, 8, 18, and 24, which brings us to 59. So there were 59 goals scored. For each of these options, try and construct in your head the triangles that would be made from these lengths. And I'm going to give an example for um, question D or for option D. And I'm going to construct my triangle just with sticks. So we're going to start off with our first stick, which is 19 centimetres. Then we're going to do another stick, which is going to be uh, 37 centimetres. And we've got one last stick, which is 61 centimetres. Now, looking at the first two sticks, the actual combined distance of them, so when we add them together, so be 19 centimetres plus 37 centimetres, is 56 centimetres. So that's the combined width of them. And you can see that that actually wouldn't be able to create a triangle if the third stick is 61 centimetres. So the side here could combine with this side. So we could move this whole stick here onto this side here, but we can't actually make a triangle with it because the two lengths that we've got won't ever reach the end bit here. They just won't ever reach that bit to be able to create the triangle. And I'm just going to put that back. So our answer is option D. First thing I'm going to do to answer this question is I'm just going to quickly draw out the um, shape again just so I can kind of show the calculations a bit easier. Okay, the first thing um, I'm going to do on the diagram is convert all of these lengths to centimetres. So we've got 4,200, 1,200, 2,400 and 1,800. And next I'm going to convert them into what um, the scale says they're going to be in our diagram. So a scale of 1 to 600 means 600 in real life, and this diagram is showing the real life situation, is 1 on our diagram. So I've converted them all in centimetres, and now I need to work out how many centimetres there are going to be on our diagram. So I'm going to start with the 4,200, and all you need to do is divide it by 600, and I get the answer of 7. So it's going to be 7 centimetres on our diagram. 1,200 divided by 600, it's going to be 2. So that's going to be 2 centimetres on our diagram. 
Um, 2400 is obviously going to be 4 centimeters, and um, 1800, divide that by the 600, is obviously going to be 3. So it's going to be 3 centimeters. So now we know what it's going to be on our diagram, we draw it. So we're going to do 7 across, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 across there. I'm going to do 2 down, so 1, 2, 4 across, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to do the left hand one first, I think, so we're going to do 3 down here. And then we just kind of join it up for what's left over. And that's our diagram. Okay, first of all we need to work out what the interior angles would add up to. So the sum of the interior angles is equal to n minus 2 times 180. Now n is the amount of sides, but it says it has 5 sides, so it would be 5 take away 2, which is 3, and then times 180, which would be 540. So we know it will add up to 540. So all we need to do is get that 540 and take away all the angles that we know. So the 118, the 84, the 108, and the 151. And when you do that, you get the answer of 79. The question asks us to find the bearing of adrift from Billstown. So we're at Billstown and we're looking at the bearing of adrift from it. So we're looking at this angle here. And so to find that angle, all we need to do is 360 degrees, which is angle at a point, and then take away the 39 degrees that we know. And that equals 321 degrees. And the reason why we find this angle is that all bearings are from north going clockwise. So the answer is 321 these types of angles aren't exclusive to parallel lines, but they do crop up quite a lot of times when you're dealing with parallel lines, and these are vertically opposite. So when you've got an angle this side and an angle this side of where two lines intersect, they're known to be vertically opposite. And the beautiful thing about vertically opposite angles is they are equal. So x is just going to equal 15 degrees. And the reason you need to state is that they are vertically opposite. Make sure you state vertically opposite. Sometimes, uh, in some exams, um, opposite is enough, <clears throat> and in other exams, it has to be vertically opposite. Okay, so we're going to start by writing this out a little bit bigger, give us a bit more space. So it's minus 6x is less than 60. And we're going to do our tram lines down. And we're going to start by um, dividing both sides by minus 6 because that's what this is doing, it's timesing the x by minus 6, so I'm going to divide both sides by minus 6. So that gets rid of the minus 6 on the left hand side, and it's going to be 60 divided by minus 6, which will be minus 10. Now we've got to be really careful here, because whenever you times or divide both sides by a negative, you must switch the inequality. So instead of pointing to the left, it's now going to point to the right. So our answer is x is greater than minus 10. There's an awful lot going on in this question. Whenever there's an awful lot going on, it's always best to draw a diagram. So we're going to start off at uh, Chilton, which is a C. Then we go to um, Bolko, that's where we're going. And we go through Devley on the way, so we'll do a D there. Uh, distance from Chelton to Devley is 34 miles. Distance from Devley to Bovlo is 16 miles. So I'm just reading through the question, adding it to my diagram. David leaves Chelton at 9 o'clock. Um, he drives to, from Chelton to Devley an average speed of 68 miles per hour. And what speed does David travel between Devley and Bolko to arrive at 9.45? So the whole duration of this, the whole thing needs to be 45 minutes. Or 
0.75 hours. And the entire distance is uh, 34 plus 16, so that would be 50 miles. Okay. Now, having a look at this, we need to find out what time um, David was at Devley. So we're going to use our speed distance time triangle. So speed equals distance over time. And we're covering up the time, because that's the one we want. So it's going to be time equals distance, which is 34, over speed, which is 68. So we're going to do 34 divided by 68, which is 0 0.5. So it would be 0 0.5 hours. So that would be half an hour. So we will be at uh, Devley at 9.30. So that means we've got 15 minutes left. Okay, so we've got 15 minutes to travel the 16 miles. So this time we're looking for the speed. Okay, so it'll be speed equals the distance, which is 16 miles over time, which is 15 minutes, but we need that in hours, so that'd be 0 0.25 hours. And so what we can do here is times top one by four to get rid of the fraction. So it becomes uh, 64 over one or just 64 miles per hour. So the answer is 64 miles per hour. So if two people liked action but not comedy films, and in total 11 liked action films, therefore there's going to be nine who also liked comedy because these two have to add up to 11. Now, if there's nine who liked action and comedy, and 16 who liked comedy in total, if we do 16 take away the nine, that leaves seven. So seven only liked comedy. It says there's 23 people altogether. So what we're going to do is take away the people who liked action, the people who liked both, and the people who liked comedy. Take all those away from 23, and we're left with five. So the answers are going to be nine, seven and five so to find the gradient we need the um, formula or the equation in the form y equals mx plus c and the m there will give us what the gradient is so we're just going to be rearranging this uh, equation and so i'll get my lines in so the first thing I'm going to do is um, get rid of the um, x's from the left hand side and we can do that by adding 6x both sides. So we've got 6y equals, and I'm going to put the 6x first just to match the y equals mx plus c. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is get rid of this 6 because we just want a y there. So we're going to divide by 6 both sides. So we've got y equals 1x plus 36. Now we shouldn't really write 1, but because we're looking for m, uh, we're looking for the number before x, I've kind of left it in there to show that the gradient will be 1. So it's really important, first of all, we make clear about how we convert things. So if I've got a, u if I've got a, a unit in kilometres and I want to convert it into metres, then we know we just times it by 1,000. So two kilometers is 2,000 meters. But if I have something in kilometers squared and I want to convert it into meters squared, I actually times it by 1,000 squared, which is 1,000 times 1,000. Okay, so I'm actually times it by not 1,000, but 1,000 squared, so that's another three zeros. You can see here that that's a million. So we times it by a million. So 13 kilometers squared is going to be the 13, and then it's going to be times by a million. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be 13 million. Now, it says here the farmer must pay one pence tax for every meter squared. So this is going to be 13 million meters squared. And so that's going to cost him 
or her 13 million pence but the answer is going to be in pounds so we just need to get rid of two of the zeros at the end so it's going to be 13 one two three four so it's going to be 130,000 pounds so angles on a point add up to 360 and we are given the values of the angles but in terms of r so we know that r plus 9r plus 20 will equal 360 so we've got uh, an equation here we can solve so first of all let's add the r's together and so that will be 10r plus 20 equals 360 then we're going to subtract the 20 from both sides so we have 10r equals 340 and then we're going to divide by 10 both sides so we have r equals 34 so our answer is 34 I'm just going to write the question out so we've got a little bit bigger writing to play with here and I don't, it doesn't actually matter which method you expand these brackets with I'm going to use smiles and rainbows so we multiply the 8 by the 10x which will make 80x and multiply the 8 by the 4 which will make 32 now here we've got a minus 5 on the outside so we do minus 5 times 8x, which is minus 40x. And minus 5 times minus 4, which is actually plus 20. And a lot of students will write take away 20 there, but that is a minus 5 on the outside of the brackets there. So it's minus 5 times the minus 4 there will give you a plus 20. Then 80x take away 40x, which will give us 40x and 32 plus 20 which would be 52 so our answer would be 40x plus 52 so we're asked to rotate the triangle a 90 degrees clockwise and the center of rotation at zero zero so we're going to first of all just show where the center of rotation is which is at our origin and what you do is you get tracing paper trace out the triangle and rest your um, pen or pencil at zero zero so I'm just going to draw it out so I just copy it out and what you do is you'd push your pen into zero zero and unfortunately I can't do that but when you when you rotate it 90 degrees clockwise the shape will end up here and so we just got to line this up perfectly a little bit less rotation maybe there we go and then what you do is you would lift your tracing paper and just draw in the shape underneath and it says to label in the triangle as B so we're looking to write a formula for the cost in pounds of hiring a microwave for X amount of days. So the cost is C, so it's going to be C equals, and it says it's going to be um, 55 pence a day. Now, it wants the answer in pounds, so we need to convert this 55 pence into pounds. So that's going to be 0 0.55. And it's going to be 0 0.55 times the amount of days. Well, it says the amount of days is X. So it's going to be 0 0.55 x then it says that there's just a one-off cost of 15 pounds so you're going to have to pay 15 pounds regardless so we're just going to add 15 onto that so the answer would be c equals 0.55 x plus 15. the most important first thing that we do is whenever you square something you times it by itself so we're going to rewrite this as x minus 15 times x minus 15 and then we just the way we approach this is exactly the same as we've done with the other ones we're going to do a multiplication grid and we're going to do x minus 15 at the top x minus 15 at the bottom then we do x times x which is x squared x times minus 15 which is minus 15x same again here 
and then we've got a minus times a minus which is a positive 225. Put all the terms together. Now you can see here that we've got the x terms here that will add together. So that would become minus 30x plus 225. And that's actually our answer. So it's x squared minus 30x plus 225. To find the gradient, we use a simple formula, which is change in y over change in x. But the way we write it is the second y coordinate take away the first y coordinate over the second x coordinate take away the first x coordinate. So the second x, uh, second y coordinate is 29, the first y coordinate is 9, second x coordinate is 14, and the first x coordinate is 10. So when you do that, you get 20 over 4, which is equal to 5. So our gradient is 5. So we're going to first of all draw a tree diagram for this information. You don't have to, but it is um, easier to understand what's going on. And so the first choice will be um, the first pick. It'll either be male or female. And the second choice will be the same, male and female. And looking at the questions, um, there are three male names in the hat and five names in total. So the fractions for the first one will be three over five. If there's three male names, there'll be two females. Now, if we've picked a male name already, there'll be two left and four left in total. If we've picked, uh, if we haven't picked a female, there's still two females, but there's four left in total. If we picked a female, there'd still be three males and only four left in total, but there'd only be one female left, one female name left and four left in total. Okay, we're looking for the probability that the genders of the names are different. So looking at the outcomes, the outcome here would be male, male. That's not what we're interested in. Here would be male, female. We are interested in female, male. We are interested in and female, female. We're not interested in. So we're not interested in these ones. And the way that tree diagrams work is as you go along the um, tree, um, any fractions you go across you multiply together to find the outcome. So this will be 3 over 5 times 2 over 4. And I realize I could cancel 2 over 4, but I generally cancel at the end. So 3 times 2 is 6, 5 times 4 is 20. We're going to do the same with the other root. So 2 over 5 times 3 over 4. So 2 over 5 times 3 over 4, 3 quarters, that would be 6 over 20. Now we're looking to see whether it was male and female or female and male. And the word or in probability means add. So it would be 6 over 20 plus 6 over 20. And this is the probability of different, uh, which will be 12 over 20. Now 12 over 20 will cancel to 3 over 5 or 3 fifths. We know that column vectors are shown with the amount right we go at the top and the amount up we go at the bottom. So we've got to work out how far right and how far up we go. So we count the jumps from the start, which is at A. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 jumps right. So the top of our column vector is going to be 5. And 1, 2, 3 down. Now, because it's down, it's going to be minus, And we've got 3 down. So it's 5 at the top and minus 3 at the bottom. So we've got a right angle triangle here. And we've got two lengths and an angle that are involved in the question. So that means we're going to be using trigonometry. And we're going to start by labeling the sides. The one opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. The one opposite the marked angle is the opposite, and the one between the right angle and the marked angle are is the adjacent. Now we're not using the adjacent here, so we're going to cross that out. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do our Sokotoa triangles. 
and so S O H so ka toa. Just right. Um, now, because we crossed out the H, we can cross out the uh, triangles that have a H in. So we're left with so, and so is short for sine x equals O over H. And so writing that in, well, the angle is x, and the O is 1.5, and the H is 2.3. And let's get our solving lines in. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite of sine both sides. So we get x sine sine. The opposite of sine is called the inverse sine. Which looks like that. And you normally press the shift button on your calculator and then sine. So when you inverse sine 1.5 over 2.3, we get 40.705, blah, blah, blah. And two decimal places, which it asks us for, that would be 40.71 degrees. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMath is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions, and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing.